on this episode of Create Consumer Repeat, I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your A10 Mini Pro by using the power of macros, along with the software and hardware I use to make live streaming a breeze. A few weeks back, I dropped an episode covering the pros and cons of the A10 Mini Pro. And in that episode, I mentioned the power of macros. Well, due to popular demand, a command performance indeed, I've decided to show you how I create and activate my silky smooth transitions, a custom picture in picture setup, and even run a stinger with the touch of a button. Before we begin, it's important to understand that a macro is nothing more than a recorded sequence of commands. And in most cases, we've all at some point in our digital lives run or even created a macro from automating mundane tasks in Excel to adding macros to a mouse button for a competitive edge in StarCraft II, the ATEM software works the same way, granting us the ability to record and run a sequence of commands that would be extremely challenging to do all by yourself while hosting a live stream. Take for example, this macro I run at the beginning of every live stream. What looks effortless is actually a string of commands that allows me to initiate the transition between my start of show graphic that's located in the media pool, fade out the timer in the downstream key, which is running off of the iMac on input four, switch to my main camera, which is located on input two, load the lower right hand bug graphic from the media pool into the actual live show, fade in that same bug via the downstream key and unmute my main mic. And for those of you wondering how I'm able to display a timer, I'm using H2R Graphics, a free app from here to record that displays code generated graphics in a key, fill or chroma window that I use to fill my secondary display on HDMI port four. It's pretty cool, right? But I bet you're asking yourself, how did you automate that? Well, it's actually pretty simple. The ATEM software has a record feature that will record all your steps and save it as a few lines of XML code that you can later play back by pressing an on-screen button. Now, I'll admit, it can be a bit tricky to set up a complex macro since you need to execute commands in the right order when recording because the slightest hiccup will render that macro useless and force you to start Game all over, over again from the beginning. I should also warn you that the first few times you will mess up and creating a macro requires a bit of trial and error, if you will. Not to mention you will inevitably realize that macros don't inherently have a sense of rhythm. So you will also need to include pauses in your sequence of commands because your fades and wipes, well, they don't happen instantaneously. With all that said though, when you do successfully record a macro, it will not only feel incredible, it will save you a ton of time, which will free you up to engage with your audience instead of focusing on running your broadcast, which is what we all strive to do. As mentioned earlier, the ATEM software is recording your macros as snippets of XML code. So for those of you that are feeling a little adventurous, or perhaps you're a bit more tech savvy, I recommend using the record feature to lay down the rough brush strokes of your macro and then edit that macro in an XML editor of your choosing. I'm using Dreamweaver since it comes bundled with my Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, but any XML editor will do. Now let's take a look at this example that fades out the bug in my downstream key, pauses, that's the rhythm I was talking about earlier, loads in a custom graphic from the media pool, loads that graphic into my downstream key, keys out the pre-multiplied area, which I defined in Photoshop, transitions from my main camera on input two to my iMac on input four, which is displaying my browser window. And lastly, brings up my main camera on input two in a picture and picture window in the lower right-hand corner and ensures both mic inputs are live. <sighs> that was a lot. 
Now, in order to create such a complex macro, I originally recorded the steps via the ATEM software, but later added a bit of nuance, modified, and even debugged a few issues I encountered via XML. Debug, you say? Yes, I said debug. And by that, I mean get all your macros to play nice and ensure that going from macro to macro renders the exact results you intended and iron out any hiccups that may arise. As with any live broadcast, you should rehearse and ensure everything runs smoothly, especially if you plan to use macros, since automation, while extremely helpful, will not double check if you're cutting to the correct camera, loading the correct graphic from the media pool, or muted a person's mic. Macros will not stop till they execute their sequence of commands. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear, and it absolutely will not stop. Now that we've covered how to create and edit macros, let's put that power at your fingertips. As mentioned earlier, the ATEM software creates an on-screen button for each and every single macro you create. The problem is reaching for a mouse and navigating to those buttons. It can be tricky when you have a bunch of windows open on your desktop. And let's be honest, anyone who's run a live stream knows that there is a forest of windows. One painless way though to avoid this issue is to download Strata Macros, an app that pulls up all your macros via Wi-Fi and displays them in a streamlined control panel on your iOS device, which in turn grants you an easy and customizable way to access and run those macros with the touch of a button. No more futzing with a mouse or navigating the maze of windows on your desktop. You're welcome. Ah, oh, thank you, Tenderheart. And yes, I'll admit that paying $50 may seem like a ton of money for an app, but I can assure you, once you start using it, you will never go back. Still not happy? Clamoring for that nuclear option? Well, don't worry, I've got you covered there too. Here is the Elgato Stream Deck, a nifty piece of hardware that allows you to create robust macros that control just about anything, and I do mean anything, running on your computer via programmable LED buttons, which you can customize with your own graphics, which makes my nerd heart to sing. Add the companion app from here to record to the mix, and you can now control even your A10 Mini Pro from the Stream Deck. But wait, why stop there? Let's just download a free copy of OBS and take the Stream Deck to a whole new level of awesome, transforming it into a feature-rich control panel that not only helps you effortlessly run your show, it's going to give your creativity And to give you just a taste of how powerful this device can be when coupled with the right hardware and software, here is a macro I created that allows me to run a stinger in an OBS window projector on my secondary display on input four, which the ATEM software displays on the upstream key and keys out using the chroma keyer. Cut from my main camera on input two to my Xbox on input one in the background as the stinger is playing, then immediately switches my upstream key source to my main camera on input two so I can run a picture in picture. And as that fades in, the macro runs a new scene on OBS that is displaying a news ticker, then immediately loads that new scene playing on input four into the downstream key. And last but not least, mutes the music coming in from audio channel two. That is a whole bunch of frigging cutting and moving and loading. Now for you super sharp power users, yup. That was done without spending $700 on a HyperDeck Mini. Not to mention it is a ton of juggling and switching between inputs and upstream and downstream keys, which is something that would be impossible to do in real time without, well, fucking it up. With all that out of the way, I should add that 
all the options discussed in this episode, while powerful and time-saving, in the long run, they do require a pretty hefty investment of time and effort to create and refine your macros, which in my book is totally worth it if you're going to take live streaming seriously. That does it for this episode. And if you have any questions or just want to chat, drop a comment in the section below. Like what you saw? Well, don't hesitate to smash that like and subscribe button. It not only lets me know you appreciate all my hard work, it helps keep me motivated so I can keep making awesome content for you guys to enjoy.